Hey there, boaters. I'm Stacey Hanrahan, and welcome to Friday's episode of Boaters TV. First up, our captain's caption photo was provided by Jeffrey Schmieg. We'll reveal the caption of the day at the end of the show. Now in smooth sailing, do you need a water maker on board? Brought to you by Blue Water Sailing Magazine. Water purifiers and bottled water are all the rage nowadays. For retired naval commander Suzanne Giesman, the decision to install a water maker on her sailboat came down to sanitation. To install or not to install became a no-brainer when they realized the water they were to receive from a small island harbor came in the form of runoff from the roof of a marina office numerous seagulls called home. Suzanne installed a water maker, but should you? In an article she wrote for Blue Water Sailing Magazine, Suzanne went over the issues to consider. Water makers use reverse osmosis to turn salt water into fresh water. Seawater is pumped through a permeable membrane that blocks the passage of salt particles. Most water makers need 10 gallons of seawater to produce one gallon of fresh water. The idea of never running out of fresh water aboard is a comforting one, but there are things to consider. First, can you afford it? Most water makers cost several thousands of dollars, even with a self-install. Do you have the space for it? All their parts could easily take up an entire locker. Do you have the power for it? Typical units are a drain on your batteries and will require you to run the generator for a recharge. Also, ask yourself if you want to put more holes in your boat. A water maker requires an inlet through hull below the water line as well as a discharge through hull that can be above the water line. So Suzanne's final question is, do you really need one? To read Suzanne's entire article, go to www.bwsailing.com. Next up, it's time for our Boat Test Reports Feature of the Week, where this week we'll take a look at the RZ4 by Tyga. The RZ4 literally expanded on the success of the 22-foot RZ2, creating even more room for a big group of family and friends. Performance is huge, too. The RZ4 delivers exceptional handling, multi-sport performance, outstanding fuel efficiency, and a dry, comfortable ride. With its patented convex V-hull and TAPS-2 technology, the RZ4 delivers world-class wakeboarding and surfing wakes without the need for ballast or drag hardware. From outside on the trailer, you can appreciate features such as the shark eye lights, graphics, and functional bow air intakes. The sun pad doubles as the engine cover over the 400 horsepower GM Vortec 5.7 liter MPI in this finished model. Our test boat had the 340 horsepower version. Seating wraps around from the port side observer's lounge to just behind the driver's seat. The way they've designed this, I can keep my left hand on the steering wheel at all times and able to keep a view out ahead. Tap system is controlled right here on the throttle shifter. And speed set is right here. So I can use my right hand to set the tap. So I can set the speed. And I can look right up here and see all of my displays on my heads-up display. This particular boat was outfitted with a tower of power complete with awesome sound and lights that grab attention across the lake. The Taiga RC4 measures 24 feet length overall with a beam width of 102 inches. She's capable of seating 17 with a load capacity of 2,715 pounds of people and gear combined. This model tips the scales at 4,485 pounds dry and carries up to 48 gallons of fuel, drawing only 26 inches draft. In the test area, moderate chop was up to one foot. This weather was not a showstopper for Taiga. They, in fact, encouraged the buyer to test on days with chop and compare it to the competitor's ride on the same kind of day. Turns were silky smooth and the transition from slalom to wake was four seconds. And the difference in the wake is visible, the attitude of the boat visibly changes, and the sound of the engine changes as well. This RZ4 performed like a champion with hole shots around 6.14 seconds and passing through 30 miles an hour in 9.61 seconds. At around 3,000 RPMs and 21 miles per hour, you get a range of about 70 miles. The RZ4 reached a top speed of 39.8 miles per hour with nearly full tanks and six on board. The RZ4 is obviously built solid and easily absorbs the difficult conditions. Thanks to Boat Test for that report. 
To see more of the Taiga RZ4, you can cruise on over to Boat Test's website at www.boattest.com. And now let's see what's making waves in nautical news. U.S. officials are battling a new threat in the war against drugs. Submarine-like boats are being used to transport cocaine from Colombia. They cost up to a million dollars apiece, are built in the Colombian jungle, and are becoming more sophisticated. Since 2001, there have been 23 cases of these semi-submersible vessels smuggling drugs. But this year alone, Coast Guard officials are predicting 85 cases, with 120 cases predicted next year. Early fiberglass models are being replaced with stronger steel versions. The semi-subs were capable of carrying four or five metric tons of cargo in the beginning, but newer ones can carry 12 metric tons. U.S. Coast Guard Commandant Thad Allen explained to CNN why the boats are so difficult to catch. They're very low profile, very hard to pick up with radar. Uh, they go very slow and don't leave a wake. Authorities believe that some semi-subs may be unmanned and operated remotely. When confronted, the drug smugglers often jump ship and sink the evidence. So U.S. officials are working with lawmakers to make the operation of a semi-sub alone illegal. And although semi-sub use is on the rise, officials say most drugs are still transported the old-fashioned way, with speedboats and airplanes. Now it's time to reveal Stacy's TheBoaters.com Celebrity Profile Pick of the Day, which is Captain Ken Malota and his 20-foot Yamaha Toys. Ken is actually a pilot based in Connecticut. Skydiving is also a passion for this adventurous young man. Looks like partying might be a hobby as well. Welcome to the boaters and congrats on your celebrity status. And finally today, the captain's caption of the day is, after Mrs. Claus took the Bertram and the reindeer in the divorce, this is all Santa had left. Submitted by Sabin. And that'll do it for this episode of the Boaters TV. See you back here on Monday.